My argument is that when you take liberalism and you turn it into a foreign policy, that's when you get into trouble. So this is not an argument against liberalism per se, it's an argument against the liberal foreign policy. Now the question that Seth asked me is, how would I define liberalism? Let me define liberalism and nationalism as best I can at the same time. Liberalism is a theory or an ideology that focuses on the individual. Liberalism assumes that we are naturally individuals first and foremost who form social contracts. Nationalism, on the other hand, is predicated on the assumption that we are first and foremost social animals who carve out room for our individualism. This is a terribly important distinction, which is really, in essence, what separates nationalism from liberalism. Liberalism focuses on the individual, you know all the emphasis we place on individual rights in this country, whereas nationalism focuses on the tribe. Now let me just unpack this a bit more. Liberalism not only focuses on the individual, but it places great emphasis on inalienable rights, individual rights. Liberals believe, and this includes, I think, virtually all Americans, that we are all born, all meaning everybody on the planet, with a set of inalienable rights. And once you assume that all individuals have a particular set of rights, you have, in effect, a universalist ideology. In other words, you go from individualism to universalism. And that, in large part, is what drives liberal hegemony. Now, nationalism, on the other hand, does not focus on the individual. It focuses on groups. It focuses on tribes. It says that we're social animals from the get-go. And you, in effect, privilege the people inside of your group. Now, on the planet today, the highest group that people identify with is the nation. And we live in a world that's populated with nations. And those nations all want their own state. See the key word? Nation, state, nation, state. So when John argues that nationalism is the most powerful political ideology on the planet, he says, just look at the globe today. The globe is filled with nothing but nation states. And nation states are the embodiment of liberalism. Shows you what a powerful force liberalism is. So those would be my two definitions. Hey, can I interrupt you for a second on liberalism? You, you, I'm going to quote you from uh, comments earlier on the book, just so people are aware. You note, for example, that Republicans and Democrats are the Tweedledee and Tweedledum on foreign policy. They're both liberals, but I think it would be helpful for yeah, you to, yeah. to expound on that. Yeah, it's very important to understand that I'm not using the word liberal here uh, in the sense that it's commonly used in political parlance in the United States where Democrats are liberals and Republicans are conservatives. I'm using liberal in the Lockean, that's John Locke, Lockean sense of the term where all Americans are liberals. That's because all Americans are deeply concerned about rights. And the principal difference between Republicans and Democrats is really over how you think about rights. But both believe in rights. We are all liberal Democrats. We all believe in the Bill of Rights. We all believe what's in the Declaration of Independence. So my argument is, especially with regard to foreign policy, that both Republican administrations and Democratic administrations, this excludes the Trump administration, but up to the Trump administration, Clinton, Bush, Obama, all three of those administrations, whether they were Republican or Democratic, pursued liberal hegemony, which is consistent with the fact that we have liberalism in our DNA, which, as I said, is a good thing domestically, but it's a source of big trouble as a foreign policy.